for you were sometimes in darkness, but now you light. But now are you light in the Lord? Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. The fruit of the Spirit is what? All goodness, all righteousness. That's the fruit. And the fruit of Satan is massive confusion, it's deception, it's lying spirits flying all over the place. You watch your tongue. Don't think that you can play with a God that, that, you know, that is so holy. Praise the Lord. It is good to be with you today on Shekinah. I hope you had a great week, a great new year. Um, I pray that it will be a blessing. It will be a blessed year for each and every one. And that we always strive to, go, to grow deeper and deeper in Christ. Um, we need spiritual growth. And as we all, you know, apply our lives uh, very wisely this year, I mean, as in, when I say apply wisely, I mean that we must get more spiritually inclined. We have to be more spiritually aware more than ever because the devil is really raging. And if we are not aware spiritually, we are going to get take, we're going to be taken in. But the devil is a liar. So today I want to do some intercession uh, for the world and we will do our best to see how the spirit of god will lead us and um, i have some scriptures to read the first intercession will be for the for israel you know um, the lord said we must pray for the peace of jerusalem so israel is always the first and then we'll do some intercession for leaders of the world all around the world and the church and uh, some intercession for our young people and so forth and you know we have some scriptures that i would like to read before we go there ama i would like to take this time to say thank you my dear for sponsoring uh, this program today ama you're such a blessing and i say thank you and uh, may god richly bless you for sponsoring this program god bless you all right now we are going to um we are going to pray and then i'll read some scriptures father god today we join our hearts in agreement dear god for all your children who have tuned in today and we're trusting you by faith that mighty god it will be a great year for us spiritually we know that dear god in jesus mighty name father god the economy and everything of the world is going right down but god we thank god for for God's economy. We thank God in Jesus' mighty name for he reigns supreme and he is going to always, always take care of his own children. Father God, we know your word teaches us you will never leave us nor forsake us, but you will be with us to the very end. Mighty God, since the Holy Spirit has moved, mighty God upon me to do some intercession today. We know that prayer is needed and many, many, mighty God, many, many in the church today, Father God, have gotten into a place of lethargy. Father God, have fallen into a place whereby their God, prayer is no more on their agenda and it's very tragic. But God, I thank you that you have a few all over the world that is really, really, really getting in there 
Father God, when it comes to intercession. And mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name, we know intercession requires a lot. Intercession requires the child of God. There is no way the child of God to really in enter into intercession or, or pray, really trying to intercede, mighty God, on behalf of others. My God, we know that it requires a, 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 a life that is lived, mighty God, a life that is lived pure. Mighty God, the pure in heart shall always see God. And we know intercession requires, my God, my God a pure life. Intercession requires, dear God, in Jesus' mighty name, that we have to kill this flesh. We cannot go and intercede on behalf of anyone or anything. This flesh has to die. And mighty God, when we pass the flesh test, we can say we are ready to, to be an intercessor. When we pass the shame test, we, uh, we can say we are ready to be an intercessor. When we pass the test, mighty God, whereby their God, we are always entangling ourselves with all kinds, uh, mighty God, of sinful activities like telling lies and committing adultery and committing fornication uh, and slandering their God each other. Father, Father God, the church universal uh, is in such a mess, uh, and we're trusting you, dear God, uh, that each and every one, uh, we will clean up our act, and we will get in there with God. Uh, people need uh, prayer. My God, in Jesus' mighty name, people need prayers, and Father God, only prayers that can move the hand of God. Uh, and if we're going to be playing church uh, and be calling ourselves intercessors, uh, let us know that dear God, all we're doing is that we're offering strange fire. And you don't need strange fire. You need the real deal. You are a real God. You are a real, real God. And in Jesus' mighty name, Father God, your people got to come real. And in Jesus' name, Father God, we're believing you and trusting you at this time. We will all join our hearts in agreement as the Spirit leads. And my God, as we read the scriptures, we will see, dear God, what God is saying for this hour as before we go into intercession. Again, we say thank you. Bless your people. Bless their homes. Bless their families. And we're trusting for salvation for the family. Mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name, salvation, Lord, salvation. Everywhere people will repent uh, and people will get their lives in order with mighty God, with the Lord, because Lord, you are coming soon. You are right at the door. You are coming soon. People think that this is, my God, is another, it's another story we're telling. But God is not a story. It's real. All around us, we can see. When we look what is going on in the world, we can see that the coming of the Lord is imminent. So may God help us today. And Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise and we give you thanks because, Lord, you are great and you are mighty. In Jesus' name. I would like to share some scriptures before we start our intercession. So, the first, we, the, the first pr set of prayers will be for, for Israel. Now let us see what God has to say in the word about Israel. Praise God. So let us go to Jeremiah chapter 31 from verses 1 to 14. I'm going to read. And you take your highlighters and highlight things and always go over the scriptures once the program is finished. At, you know, in, in your own, you know, convenient time. Just go over the scriptures again. At the same time, Jeremiah 31. And this is, of course, speaking about the restoration of Israel. At the same time, says the Lord, will, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. Praise God. 
The Lord has appeared of old unto me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin of Israel. You shall again be adorned with your tabrets, and shall go forth in the dances of them who make merry. You shall yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchman upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise you, and let us go up to Zion unto the Lord our God. For thus says the Lord, Sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nation. Publish you, praise you, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth and with them the blind and the lame the woman with child and her travails with child together a great company shall return thither they shall come with weeping and with supplications will i lead them I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in straight way, wherein they shall not stumble, for I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. 10. Hear the word of the Lord, O you nations, and declare it in the isles afar off. And say, He who scatters Israel will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd does his flock. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him, who was stronger than he. Therefore, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord, for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young and of the flock and of the herd, and their soul shall be as a watered garden, they shall not sorrow any more. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Now, we have seen here that the prophet Jeremiah, of course, you know, he brought all these beautiful prophecies about Israel. And we know that many of them is, is talking about the kingdom age and so forth. And, and this could be one too. But what I want to draw to your attention is, all of you who are fighting against Israel, all of you who are coming against Jerusalem, all of you who are coming up against God's children, I want you to know that it's all effortless because God is going to save his people. And he's doing a great job with that right now, this present time, right now as I speak. A lot of people are going back to Israel. The land is very fertile and, and they are producing lots of stuff whereby, whereby the land was very, very barren. It's now fertile and then they're, they're, you know, it's producing a lot more than ever before. And you know, the land of Israel is flourishing. To those of you, you know, all you of those who you, you hate the Jews, I would like you to know the Jews are God's chosen. And the Lord has commanded us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And you trust me, the Lord will save his people. Praise God. Now, after that, we are going to pray for leaders. You know, maybe it might not go in the same order as I'm saying it. But, you know, as the Holy Spirit, of course, leads we will follow. We will go now to, to Proverbs. Proverbs. Let's turn to Proverbs 14, 34. Proverbs 14, 34. Praise God. Now, we will back up a little bit from 31. He who oppresses the poor reproaches, his, reproaches his, ma his maker, but he who honors him has mercy on the poor. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous has hope in his death. Wisdom rests in the heart of him who has understanding, but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Righteousness, now listen to this, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The king's favor is toward 
toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him who causes shame. Now we know that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. All our leaders all over this world, we have all kinds of leaders. Many, many of our leaders all over the world, many of them are not Christians. Many are, and we thank God for them. Many talk a little bit about God. Many, many don't say nothing about God, you know, and so forth. And we, we have to pray for our leaders. When the leaders are saved, praise God, there is hope for the people. I was um, looking at the news very briefly. I'm not a television person, but I was looking at the news very briefly the other day uh, because I had something to sit, you know, something to do which requires sitting. So I was doing that and I was listening for a little bit. And very, very strange, this, is, this was something, you know, um, I was very, very happy about. And across the screen, you know, it, it was showing that uh, the Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu, uh, he is doing his best to cause Israel to be released. Now, um, I don't know how well that sits with many, but I would like you to know that God has a plan for Israel. So um, we know that uh, Netanyahu, uh, he himself, you know, he is a godly person in his own way. And we know that, you know, God can use him to bring Israel to the Messiah and but the reason why I'm talking about Netanyahu, because he is a leader. So I'm talking about leaders now all over the world. We need godly leaders because the Bible is so, so correct when it says righteousness is what exalts a nation. Now, if you don't have a righteous leader, if you don't have a godly leader, now I'm not talking about leaders of this religion and that religion. I'm talking about a leader who is born again by the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. And they, they, we know that righteousness is what exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And of course, this holds true for any nation. Much Bible, much freedom. Little Bible, little freedom. No Bible, no freedom. Praise the Lord. So we need born-again leaders that will stand on the naked word of God. And they will stand with spiritual backbone and lead their people. So we're going to be praying for leaders soon. Now after that, we will pray for the church. The church, like I just said, it's in a mess. The church is in a mess spiritually, and, you know, it's, it's very, very sad to say that, you know, the church is in the world, and the world is in the church. We have all kinds of wickedness in the church, you name it, right in the church. Praise God. In the church universal, you have all kinds of Satanists. You have all kinds of warlocks. You have all kinds of witches. And Satan has placed them in every church all over this world just to bring down the churches. But I'm going to tell you something today. As God's children arise and clean up, that our prayers can go up with, you know, as a sweet-smelling savor, not offering strange fire because of our sinful lifestyle. No, when you live in sin and you're doing intercession, you're, you're, all you're doing is offering strange fire. It's not going to be heard and it's not going to work. God wants only the pure in heart. The Bible says he, that God will not withhold any good thing from those that walk upright. Praise God. The Bible also says in the book of James, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The prayer of a righteous man, not anybody, not any flimsy, wishy-washy, backboneless, spineless Christian, sorry. The prayer of a righteous man, the prayer of a righteous woman, the prayer of a righteous, of the righteous avails much. Praise God. And you have all kinds of wickedness in the church, all kinds of sins. And, you know, we have to pray for the church because guess what? The wicked is right in 
the church, doing everything, their leaders and, and everything. But listen what God says about them. Let's go to the same, the same Proverbs and we will go to chapter 15. Listen what God says from verse 6. Proverbs 15 from verse 6. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. In the house of the righteous is treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish does not so. The sacrifice of the wicked, listen to this, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright, the prayer of a righteous person, the prayer of a, a person that lives pure, the prayer of a person that has reverence and respect for the Holy Spirit, that's the prayer God will hear in Jesus' name. All right, so I will read that again. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. Now, nine, the way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loves him who follow after righteousness. God loves those who follow after righteousness. Wickedness can't sit with God. Because God is a holy God, okay? Correction is grievous unto him who forsakes the way. And he who hates reproof shall die. People don't want to be corrected, all right? Preachers doesn't want to take a stand. They just, they just cope with any type of foolishness in the church. And all because of, you know, people are paying tithes and come on. People are paying tithes and, you know, they're giving big money to the church. Listen, it is not about dollars and cents. If you are living pure and your church have reverence and respect for the, for the Holy Spirit and you honor God in everything you do and you, you lead the people in righteousness and holiness and don't corrupt them with your nonsense, you know, I'm telling you, God will bless that church. Your, your source is not man. Your source is God. You have to depend on the Lord for the needs of the church. Not because people paying tithe, you will compromise your standards. No, no, no. The leaders need spiritual backbone to lead the church that God would say, you know, that God says in his word to lead the church. You know, in the book of Corinthians, Paul said it very clearly. There was wickedness in the church. And Paul says that, you know, that, that fornicator have to leave because of his wickedness. And Paul said it clearly. He give him, give him over to Satan. Right? We don't want to take that stand for what is right. You cannot compromise your standards. It is not right in the sight of God. Now, these few verses that I've just read, it is not talking here about the world. It's talking about the righteous and the wicked. And this is all about, you know, the contrast between the righteous and the wicked. So it's talking here about both, the wicked, the wicked, the wicked, and the righteous. Listen what it says. 11, hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more than the hearts of the children of men? We think we can get away with wrong things. As though you think that God, he takes a nap, you know? He doesn't take a nap. He doesn't go to bed. He doesn't sleep. God sees every single thing of our lives. If the Bible says he knows every grain of hair on our heads, can you imagine our hearts. He knows. He knows everything. He tried the hearts and reins of man all the time. God is God. A scorner loves not one who reproves him, neither will he go unto the wise. It's true. 
Praise the Lord. Nobody wants reproof. Nobody wants correction. And once they know that, you know, you, you are you're a person that, you know, is gifted from God, you have the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you can discern them through and through. They don't want no part of you. Praise God. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. So we see here the contrast between the wicked and the righteous. The devil is a liar. So we have to pray that God will intervene. All right, for the church, he will intervene. Listen what it says in Ephesians chapter 5 about the church. Ephesians chapter 5. And we will go from verse 1 to 21. Listen what it says here about God's children. This is God's people, you know. Listen what it's saying. Be ye therefore, Ephesians 5, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in what? Love. As Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for us as a sweet smelling savor. If you have to, you know, correct somebody, if there's, you know, you, you put out correction out there, you know, people think that you don't love. You can't judge a man or a woman of God when it comes to, to, to all these things that's going on in the churches. You can't judge. Because let me tell you something. If you know what is really love, I will tell you what is love. The Bible declares it. If you love him, which is God, you will keep his commandments. That's love. When you love God, you don't live like the devil. When you love God, you don't walk careless. And when you have to hand out correction, people think that you don't love. You can't judge because, listen, don't ever judge a man or woman of God. Don't. You'll get in trouble with God. Touch not God's anointed and do his prophets no harm. This Bible teaches us love is as strong as death. And if you truly love God and you see wrong things and you know that you're serving God out of a pure heart and you see stuff that's wrong, you need to get righteously indignant. So Jesus walked in the temple and they're selling all kinds of stuff. They're, you know, they are, you know, doing an uh, exchange and they're, they're, they're selling all kinds of stuff. He took, he took a rod, he took a whip, and he started to upturn tables. And he says, when my house should be called a house of prayer, you have made it a den of thieves. So are you going to say God didn't love? He loved. That's why he got righteously indignant. Why? He is God and he hates sin. He hates sin. Sin is a reproach. But people don't want correction. And that is sad. And then you label them when you have to correct. Then you label them, oh, they don't know what's love. Do you know what's love? If you know what's love, you will not stand for things that are wrong. Come on, every pastor, you listen to me. Get some spiritual backbone and you make sure that you and your church, we're doing the same. You and your church, pray that God will have mercy and that we will repent and that God can send revival. Praise the Lord. People that are shallow Christians, shallow, they don't know their right foot to the, from, their, from their left one. And they're so quick to judge. Do not judge. If the Bible says we must judge righteous judgments, that's what you have to do. Judge righteous judgment. Because when you see you judge and you don't judge righteously, the Lord will deal with you. Praise God. Now listen what the word of God says. It says here, But fornication... And all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. All kinds of foolishness, 
all kinds of jesting, all kinds of, you know, you're bringing division in the church. That's all over the world, all over, all over. The gossiping, you know, we're, we're ripping each other apart. Don't you think that God is seeing everything? He knows. If you, you look at Christians today, lie. They make up lies all the time. Listen, you either clean up your tongue or you, you know where you go, you're, you're going to go. All liars shall go in the lake of fire. You better clean up and quickly. Praise God. For this you know, that no whoremongers, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ of God. Take the scripture, read it, believe it for what it is saying. Praise God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Look for who you are in company with. And if you don't have eyes to see, ask God for the spirit of discernment. Not the spirit of the evil eye. You know where I'm coming. You know that evil eye. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the spirit of discernment that comes from God Almighty. Praise the Lord. You have to look out for deception. There's a lot of deception. You have people that's living in sin. They're serving the devil. And they have text all over the place. And, 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 and guess what their texts are? It's scriptural. Taking God's word and offering strange fire. That's what you call strange fire. Sending out texts that you don't live. Am I going to handle this book here? And send out scriptures and I don't live them? What are you doing? Are you foolish? You're such an idiot that you don't see what God is going to do to you? You don't take the holy scriptures and corrupt people with them. Or try to let people think that you're something and you're not. That's why people need discernment. When people send scriptures to you, come on. You know, you need to discern who these things are from and their, their lifestyle. Praise God. People talk about the kingdom, you know, the, 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 the kingdom living. If we understand kingdom living, our character would be in order. We will live a holy and a pure life. We talk about all these things. We talk about God. We talk about Jesus. We talk about the Holy Spirit. Come on, who are you fooling? Stop your nonsense. Clean up your act and start sending out text when you live the word. If your life doesn't, doesn't back the word that you are sending out, forget it. You are just offering up strange fire. Praise God. Let no man deceive you with vain words. You say, well, God's word is not vain. It is all scriptural. Do you live it? If you live it, send it out. If you're not living it, then clean up and stop being a hypocrite or a fool because people knows your life. But you're not thinking that's what Satan is, an idiot. Make himself the biggest idiot all the time. Eight, for you were sometimes in darkness, but now you light. But now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. The fruit of the Spirit is what? All goodness, all righteousness. That's the fruit. And the fruit of Satan is massive confusion. It's deception. It's lying spirits flying all over the place. You watch your tongue. Don't think that you can play with a God that, that, you know, that is so holy. No, no, no. And you're professing to be a Christian. You're so foolish, man. Stay quiet. Repent. Clean up. Get your act together. And let your life back the word. Watch this. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Watch who, who you're meddling with. What their lives, right? 
Look at their lives. Ask God for, for discernment. What you're meddling with, what you're fellowshipping with. Praise God. Guess what? We're calling evil good and good evil today. You missed the mark. Get with it and go repent and ask God for eyes of discernment. But today, blind leading blind. And guess what? When you fall down, both going down. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Reprove them. Tell them that unless they repent, there is no hope. It's repent or perish. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever does not make manifest is light. Something comes out in the open, the devil sells himself. Because he goes and he tells this one and tells that one and you know, that one and the other one. And, and the devil is exposing himself all the time. Such an idiot Satan is. Such an idiot, it's not funny. Wherefore he said, Awake thou who sleep, and rise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. So then, so see then that you walk circumspect, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the times, because the days are evil. You talk about an evil day that we're living in. Who is Paul talking to here? It's the church. It's Christians. Not the ungodly, you know. The Christians. Redeeming the time because they're evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. What the will of the Lord is. Some people, they're all over the globe. Walking out the will of God. Don't want nothing to do with God's will. Don't want to suffer. Don't want to, not, nothing. Everything must go smooth. You ain't going to get it. Because I have word for you right now. You better get yourself in the perfect will of God and not permissive. You will reap the benefits of not doing God's perfect will. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Spin not the Spirit of the devil, the Spirit of God. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father and the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let us go to Ephesians, the same chapter 5. Watch this. Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of, of, wor of water by the word, that he might present it, it to himself, a what? A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but at this it should be holy and without blemish. That's what God is saying. He wants the church to be holy and without blemish, without sin. You can't go to heaven with sin. Stop living a life of mockery. You will pay the price. And a dear one, you will not get off. You can't mock God. You either come clean and come real, and you better make sure that you do some genuine repentance. Because the more you mock God, the more you're going to pay for it. Praise God. Stop your nonsense and get with it. Everybody should be praying for spiritual eyes. You cannot discern evil or good. You cannot discern good spirit and evil spirit with, with natural senses. I've always said that. The church, the church is in a mess. And we must pray for the church. Praise God. Now we're going to go to Timothy. 
1 Timothy chapter 4. Praise God. Listen what it says. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse, verse 12. Young people, 1, 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. Let no man despise your youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Young people, that is how you have to walk, pure. And you have to be an example. Young people are all over the place. Young people in the church are so corrupt. Living all kinds of life out there and coming in Sunday morning and singing Amazing Grace. Yeah, right. Repent. Thank you, Jesus. And so forth. And we're going to ask God that people everywhere will repent and they will serve God. People everywhere will repent and serve the Lord so that we know that revival will follow genuine repentance all the time. Now we're ready to intercede and I pray that you go to God sincerely with me in this next half an hour of intercession. You go to God with me sincerely. The Bible says, where two can come in agreement touching one thing. God is in the midst and it shall be done. So let us set our hearts to come in agreement right now. And like I said, we will start with Israel. I know many of you don't, don't believe in speaking in tongues, but I want you to know tongues are of God. It's not of the devil and it's very important. Because it's a language that only God understands. And you're going to hear a lot about tongues. And you can criticize me. I could not care less. I am living this book. And this book says we must be filled with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Read the book of Acts. Father God, in the name of Jesus, today we give your praise, myself and all your children. We are coming in agreement right now, dear God, in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray, God, that the Spirit of God will open our eyes. The Spirit of God will open our eyes so that we can have that spirit of discernment. Open our ears spiritually so that we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying. My God, my God, today we come in agreement uh, for the nation of Israel. Uh, we come in agreement uh, for the Prime Minister, their God, uh, Netanyahu. Uh, my God, we come in agreement uh, for God's children. Uh, my God, uh, the Messianic Jews all over Israel, all over Jerusalem. Uh, we are coming in agreement right now. Uh, Father God, as we come in agreement, uh, the word of God teaches us, uh, my God, my God, uh, that once we come in agreement, you will hear our prayers. Uh, and Father God, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for the nation of Israel. Uh, we thank you, dear God, uh, for Netanyahu. Uh, my God, I pray that in Jesus' mighty name, uh, that he will continue to take that stand for God. Uh, and Lord Jesus, uh, my God, we know that Israel will be saved according to your word. Uh, and Lord, we come to you in no other name. Baruch Haba Bishem Adonai Baruch Haba Bishem Adonai Baruch Haba Bishem Adonai Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord and today we come in the name of the Lord and we're trusting you dear God that you will continue to strengthen mighty God Netanyahu and his family we pray for divine guidance and protection for them today we ask their God uh, for the nation of Israel Lord uh. We're praying salvation for the Jews. We pray that, dear God, you will use the Messianic Jews in Israel. You will use the Messianic Jews in Jerusalem. You will use these Messianic Jews all over the world. And mighty God, we're trusting that the Spirit of God will anoint these Messianic Jews in signs and wonders. Many want to see to believe. And mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name, we go back to the world 
word of God. Uh, when you raised Lazarus from the dead, uh, my God, my God, uh, many of the Jews uh, believed on the Lord uh, once you raised him from the dead. Uh, and today we thank you, dear God, uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, you will use these Messianic Jews in signs uh, and wonders. Uh, use them to raise the dead. Uh, use them to cleanse the leper, heal the sick, cast out devils in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, and we give you praise and we give you thanks, dear God, uh, in Jesus' name that you will save Israel. Uh, we pray for the peace for Jerusalem. Uh, we pray for the peace for the nation of Israel. Uh, we pray that many, many, my God, uh, will turn uh, to the Messiah. My God, you will open their eyes spiritually uh, and they will mighty God as they know the truth, uh, as they accept Jesus as their Messiah. They will know the truth and the truth will set them free. Uh, today we are coming in agreement, dear God, uh, that many Jews will be saved uh, and God, we give your praise uh, and we give your thanks for a mighty outpouring of your spirit uh, upon the nation of Israel. Uh, God, just send a glorious revival. Uh, send a glorious revival. Uh, send a glorious revival among them. And mighty God, all of their enemies, Father God, in Jesus' name, all who hate Israel, all their enemies, their God, in Jesus' name, and they have many, all who hate Israel, my God, let them know that in Jesus' mighty name, they're not fighting against man, they're fighting against God, because God, in the name of Jesus, they are the apple of your eyes, and Father God, they are your chosen and the devil is a liar. My God, we pray for the peace again uh, for Jerusalem. Uh, my God, that shalom, uh, that shalom, Lord, uh, that shalom. Uh, give them your peace, oh God. Uh, and we pray for your presence in that nation more than ever. And you anoint your people, the Christian Jews, and use them mightily. Uh, and the elite will bow their knees in repentance to God. Uh, Father God, we pray for that spirit of repentance for Israel uh, and for for Jerusalem uh, and that their God uh, as they repent revival will come uh, my God my God uh, we give you praise and we give you thanks uh, in Jesus name your blessings upon the Jews uh, salvation for the Jews uh, and the peace of God for Israel uh, the peace for Jerusalem uh, today we thank you uh, we say to da Raba Adonai Jehovah to da Raba Adonai Jehovah to da Raba Adonai my Jehovah, we thank you, Lord, and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we, we pray for our leaders now all over this world. Uh, my God, you see the leaders, uh, Father God of this world. Uh, my God, so many of them uh, are so religious, uh, but they are very lost. Uh, mighty God is not about religion. Uh, they are religious, but very lost. Uh, mighty God, we're looking to you to save leaders all over this world. Uh, we're looking to you, dear God, uh, in Jesus' mighty name, uh, to save our leaders. Uh, righteousness uh, is what exalts a nation, uh, but sin is a reproach. My God, in the name of Jesus, save our leaders. Uh, mighty God, we need them to be born again. Uh, we need Need our leaders, dear God, uh, in Jesus' name, to be born again uh, of your spirit. Uh, mighty God, uh, in Jesus' name, uh, deliver them uh, from the, the religious devils uh, and the religious demons uh, and from the common G God. Uh, my God, it's only one capital G God uh, that exists, uh, the Son of the Most High God, uh, the God of Abraham, uh, the God of Isaac, uh, and the God of Jacob. Uh, my God, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, save our leaders uh, and mighty God uh, when our leaders are saved. Uh 
Father God, their nation will prosper. When our leaders are saved, their people will prosper. They will prosper themselves. Mighty God, no God, no freedom. My God, my God, no God, no freedom. No God, no freedom. My God, in the name of Jesus, save our leaders worldwide. In Jesus' mighty name. Today we thank you, dear God, and we give your praise right now. We are coming in agreement for the church, uh, the church of Jesus Christ universal. Uh, the church is so corrupt. Uh, my God, my God, uh, it's all compromise. Uh, mighty God, so much compromise in our pulpits. Uh, so much compromise. Uh, Father God, uh, I pray that you will bless every preacher, every born again spirit filled creed preacher in our pulpits, uh, that they will have spiritual backbones uh, and they will stand up for righteousness uh, and holiness my God, you're coming back. You're coming back. The rapture is about to take place when the church should be in rehearsal, preparing their God for the recital. Oh God, the church is in a mess. Father God, I pray there will be genuine repentance in our churches, oh God. There'll be genuine repentance. He he makakata he he rebe baba ho ho koto moko moko koto koto saka soko koto rebe baba baba shandale bebe be ye rebe ha ha mama ye ye koto my God raise up the church. Raise up the church, God, uh, as we repent genuinely. Uh, my God, my God, uh, revival will come. Uh, revival will come. Uh, revival will come. Uh, we pray that, dear God, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, let us all know, dear God, uh, you're coming for a church without spot, uh, without wrinkle, uh, and without blemish. Uh, Father God, this church universal uh, is so sick, it's not funny. My God, my God, uh, deliver them. Uh, you said in your word, uh, every sick person need a physician. Uh, what we need, dear God, uh, is a fresh revelation of Jesus. Uh, what we need uh, is to return to our first love. Uh, mighty God, uh, so many of us, uh, so many of the church uh, are like the church, dear God, that you describe uh, in the book of Revelation. Uh, the church of Laodicea, mighty God, uh, yes, they're increased with goods. Uh, they have the stained glass windows, uh, mighty God. God, uh, they have their posh, mighty God, uh, all the pews there, God, uh, they are plush, uh, they have their plush carpets, uh, mighty God, they have their grand piano, uh, they have their choir there, God, uh, in Jesus' mighty name, uh, with the right robe, uh, but their God, you said in your word, uh, they are naked, uh, they are naked, uh, they are blind, uh, they are wretched, uh, and mighty God, uh, in the name of Jesus, they have no spirit, uh, my God, the spirit Spirit has left uh, because of the wickedness. Uh, and my God, uh, what many of them need to do uh, is put Ichabod at their doors uh, where it says, uh, where it means the glory of God has departed. Uh, the devil is a liar. Satan, but I say unto you today, your devil, you listen to this. God said in his word, uh, he will build his church uh, and the gates of hell uh, shall not prevail against it. Uh, you'll lose the true church. Uh, you'll lose God's remnant. Uh, God has a remnant. Uh, and in the name of Jesus, uh, they're going to walk worthy in white. Uh, and Satan, they're going to mess you up in these end times uh, because God's going to use them. Uh, power and purity goes hand in hand. Uh, and there is a people that's walking pure. Uh, there is a people that's walking in white, uh, and they're going to mess you up, Satan. The devil is a liar. All them witches, they're going to run out of the church. Uh, all the warlocks and the Satanists is either they repent, uh, and God have mercy upon them, or they run. Uh, my God, my God, uh, today we're asking you, dear God, uh, in Jesus' mighty name, uh, that your church will repent everywhere. Uh, our pastors will have spiritual backbone, uh, and stop being sissy in the pulpit. Uh, in Jesus' mighty him. Stop compromising their standards. Uh, my God, my God, my God. Uh, may you have mercy upon the church. Uh, and may your people cry out uh, in genuine repentance. Uh, and you lead them to where you would have them. Uh, my God, my God. Uh, 
too much players in the church. Uh, my God, my God, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, the first page of the church, uh, mighty God, uh, has a lot of playboy and playgirls. Uh, mighty God, we're playing, uh, we're playing, but the devil is a liar. My God, that the spirit of conviction uh, hit your people so strong uh, that it will send them uh, to repent. Uh, it will send them on their faces uh, to cry out to God uh, in sackcloth and ashes. Uh, my God, my God, my God, uh, may you have mercy, Lord. Uh, may you have mercy. Uh, may you have mercy. Uh, may the spirit of God uh, convict uh, and let people go, mighty God, on their knees in repentance. Uh, release a spirit of conviction in Jesus' mighty name. God, we give you praise. So many people don't want to go to church. So many people, they will do everything else but go to church when the Sunday come. Listen, I'm going to tell you what you are right now. Spiritually, you're sick. You need help. You can't get at home what you can get from the church. You need divine revelation in your soul. You need the power of Almighty God. When you go to church, you have fellowship. When you go to church, the presence of God is there. When you go to church, you, you hear about what God is saying and doing, and you need divine revelation. Where are you going to get that at home? You say, well, at home I get everything. You're a poor case. I want you to know what God's word says. It says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. For where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst, and it shall be done. Praise God. The word of God teaches us. It is better to be a doorkeeper in the house, a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Can you imagine Sunday, you are about everything else except your father's business. Shame on you. Shame time for everything else except the house of God. And then you want God's help? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I can understand a shut in. I can understand people who are sick. I can understand people who have to work on a Sunday like nurses and stuff. All that I understand fully. But you can't tell me that you're at home and you're forsaking God's house. Yes, right. The devil is a liar. I bind up the spirit of lethargy and laziness and sluggishness. I bind up the spirit of pride in the church. I bind up every spirit of immorality. I bind up all kinds of sins in the church. Wickedness and evil. The devil is a liar. The church will arise. God has a remnant. And the Lord will raise up that faithful remnant. In Jesus' mighty name, the devil is a liar. Let me tell you, all those of you who are trying to, to destroy the church, destruction will come to you first. You can't touch God's business. The church is the Lord's. Be careful and repent or perish. Praise God. Don't touch the church. I don't care what church is it. Don't touch the church. The church is the Lord's. Especially the true church. I'm not talking about, you know, all kinds of church out there, like, you know, temples and this and that. I'm talking about the true church. Don't touch them. Praise the Lord. My God, I give you praise and I give you thanks that the church will go in deep repentance. And Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, we will put away our stupid programs and our this and our that. And mighty God, we will seek God in, 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 in sackcloth and ashes. 
In Jesus' name, we will seek God in repentance uh, and turn from our sins uh, so that you can have mercy upon us uh, and send a glorious revival. Uh, and the church will be the church where there will be signs and wonders proving that our Lord Jesus Christ reign supreme. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father God, bless your church in Jesus' mighty name. Mighty God, and we thank you for repentance, and that's genuine. Thank you, Lord. Genuine repentance for the church, universal. Father God, we bring to you right now our young people. They're doing everything. And in the name of Jesus, Satan, you'll lose our young people. You'll lose them in the church and outside the church. Devil, you're hungry for blood. But I want you to know, in the name of Jesus, we bind up that spirit of murder all over this world. That spirit of murder, the spirit of suicide all over this world. Our young people, young, young people are depressed. Young people, 20 years old, 19 years old, 15 years old, they're depressed. They're depressed. They're oppressed. They're suppressed. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, you'll lose our youths. In Jesus' mighty name, this God going to save them. God going to save our young people. And in the name of Jesus, Satan, they're going to turn and they're going to kick you up when they get saved. They're going to turn and they're going to make sure that they have you under their feet. In Jesus' name, they're going to mash you up. In Jesus' name, Father God, save our young people and deliver them, dear God. Deliver them the spirit of fear. Many of them are so fearful. They are bound by fear. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. The devil is a liar. Faith tolerated is faith contaminated. In Jesus' name, loose our young people. Loose them and let them go. In Jesus' name, you will not have our young people. In Jesus' name, God going to reveal himself to them and he will raise them up. And no weapon that is formed against them will ever prosper. Loose them. In Jesus' mighty name, Father God, we bring to you our homes right now. All those who are listening to this program, mighty God, save them. Save their spouses. Save our single parents. Save all these children that is giving their parents a difficult time. Deliver them and save them. Let them know they have to respect their parents. They cannot walk in and walk out when they want. We pray, God, that they will, they will respect their parents in Jesus' mighty name. And mighty God, I'm looking to you, dear God, that you will save our homes. Save our homes that are so corrupted and so divided. My God, my God, in our homes, dear God, you see the division. That's what Satan wants, to divide our homes. The devil is sent just to divide our families. But Satan, you are a liar. God set the solitary in families. You are a liar, Satan. The blood of Jesus is against you. You'll lose our homes right now. You'll lose our families right now. God will restore our families. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we give you praise and we give you thanks uh, that you will bless every home, uh, every home that is listening to this program. Uh, seal up their homes with your blood. Uh, meet their every need financially, uh, spiritually, and physically. Uh, meet their every need, oh God. Uh, meet their every need. Those who are sick in those homes, uh, we pray, God, that you will heal them. Uh, you will deliver them uh, and you will set them free. Uh, by the power that is in the blood, uh, you will deliver those homes uh, from fear and anxiety. 
anxiety and pride. You will deliver those homes, mighty God, from sinful activities. You will deliver those homes, those who are strung out with pornography, a bind of that demon spirit, that shameful demon. In the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you. Your spirit, that adulterous spirit, everything we bind up in Jesus' mighty name. Save those homes. Have mercy there, God. You see the fornication. You see the dope. You see the, the drunkenness. You see the language. Cuss, cuss, cuss. Lie, lie, lie. My God, my God. Deliver those homes. Deliver those families. Deliver those young people. Deliver that husband and wife. Deliver them. Deliver them. Deliver them in Jesus' mighty name. And save those homes. Thank you, Lord. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, uh, we give you praise and we give you thanks. Uh. Lord, we bring now the Satanists and the warlocks and the witches all over the world. The covens. My God, my God. Can you imagine? This devil is such a liar. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You lying devil, in the name of Jesus, on the authority of God's holy word, every one of these satanists and these warlocks and their witches and all the psychics and the astrologers and mighty God and many more, Father God, confound and confuse the wickedness. In Jesus' mighty name, confound and confuse their evil. Bring all their evil to naught. Bring their wickedness to naught. Fill their faces with shame and confusion. And we pray that they will repent. Mighty God, everywhere, they will repent of their sins. Or God, vengeance is yours. If they don't want to repent. And Lord, you repay. Vengeance is yours. They're destroying churches. They're destroying families. Mighty God, all over this world, Satan and his demons, them. They're meeting. They're going to their, 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 their covens and whatever. More, they're more sincere and more loyal than, 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 than God's people who, don't, who, who, dis, who despise church. And they're meeting and they're loyal. But Satan, no matter how loyal you and your crowd are, God, this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is greater than you. He will destroy every one of your works uh, and he will bring it to naught. And Satan, your time is short. Jesus will destroy you with the brightness of his coming. Your lying devil, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you. You will be thrown in the bottomless pit, Satan. Your time is short. All your demons, them, and the Antichrist and the false prophet all going in the lake of fire. And don't worry, you will accompany them down the road. Satan, in the name of Jesus, you're a liar. You're a loser. And you can't win. God is greater than you. And God is going to save all who cry out in repentance. God will save them. And mighty God, I pray, there will be repentance everywhere. And Lord, I know that you will have mercy on those who cry out in genuine repentance to you. May you save Save, Lord. Your hand is not short that you cannot save. Your ear is not heavy that you cannot hear. Isaiah 50, 59 from verse 1 to 3. You hear our prayers. And mighty God, today we're thanking you, dear God, 
they in Jesus' mighty name for deliverance for your people all over this world. We're thanking you, dear God, that you will save the unsaved Jews. We're thanking you, dear God, you will save your church. We're thanking you, dear God, you will save our young people. We're thanking you, dear God, you will save every home, every home, every home, every home. My God, you will deliver and save. Mighty God, everything that's the Divided. My God, you will put in place together. The churches, the division, you will, mighty God, put in place back together. There will be genuine repentance all over, all over their God, all over this world. And Lord, you will save your people for your name's sake. In Jesus' mighty name. And we say thank you. Tudaraba Adonai Jehovah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you in Jesus' name. Now, for those of you who would like to accept Jesus Christ, I'm going to lead you right now in the sinner's prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I need to serve the Lord. I need to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of every sin. Lord, I want to live the rest of my life serving you because, Jesus, I know you're coming. Mighty God, as I invite you into my heart, may you have mercy on me and deliver me and save me from the clutches of Satan, for the devil is a liar. Lord, I come to you and I ask for mercy. Mercy, O oh God, and grant to me this abundant life, just like the scripture says, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God richly bless you, and we love you, and I just pray that you will keep pray, playing, you know, this, um, go, when I say playing, just go over and over and come in agreement because intercession is needed. People don't know to pray because they're not taught how. Then there are many, many who are taught but are very, very lazy and sluggish. And they just don't like prayer. They love everything else. They just watch TV and they do other stuff and... Praying is so neglected, and it's needed. Prayer changes things. Prayer moves the hand of God. And may you continue to listen and come in agreement. Don't not just one time or two times. Do it on a regular basis because it's powerful. God is good. Jesus loves you, and we love you.